Hi everyone, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and I am here with my weekly inspirational vlog in addition to the kickoff of our handmade holiday series here at SoSpire.com. I am going to be double dipping and using our Tuesdays for the larger projects and our Fridays to share smaller, more inspirational projects. And today's theme is going to be gratitude and joy. And I have selected the perfect fabric to inspire this project, which I will be sharing with you in just a moment. But first, I'd like to know what is in your mug? Mine is full of a piping hot, fresh cup of Starbucks holiday blend, and it is divine. So I'm really excited to share this beautiful fabric with you. I love the prints that have messages on them for gifts because I feel like it's a gift that really every time the recipient uses it, they are inspired and they think of you and all of the sentiments are kind of naturally transferred with the gift. So I want to read some of the beautiful sentiments on this fabric here, which let me see if I can find some salvage and tell you. This print is by Kelly Ray Roberts and it is from her Soul Shine and Daydreams collection. Yeah, I'll show you that salvage. And so on this piece of material, Kelly Ray has included the following sentiments. I believe kindness changes everything like in a break your heart joyful way. I believe that hope matters, that we can inspire change by radiating joy, love, and compassion to everyone who we encounter. I believe when we extend our hearts towards those in need, we also heal something important within ourselves. I believe celebrating others, encouraging their success, and lifting them up along the way is essential to our collective well-being. I believe in hugs, spontaneous compliments, and smiling at strangers. These small acts matter deeply. I believe in listening to the wise voice of my heart and doing the right thing even when it's scary. I believe living a life of gratitude is one of the kindest gifts we can give the world. It's truly the sentiments that make this fabric spectacular. So I'd love to know which was your favorite. I think for me... Uh, my favorite will be, I believe living a life of gratitude is one of the kindest gifts we can give the world. And so I hope you know I am so grateful for you, each and every one of you. And I am really excited to share this holiday season with you. So today, I want to teach you, and I have taught this before, this one's going to be slightly different because we're going to use a different interfacing, it will have a different feel to it. I also want to talk to you about the practicality of this gift, which very much could end up being a gift to yourself. So today from this gorgeous fabric, we are going to make a custom journal cover. So I'm going to give you the formula so you can sizes to fit any journal that you like. So I am an avid journaler. I journal every single morning as part of my morning routine for about 30 minutes. I probably fill up a fresh journal about every two months. 
So there are stacks and stacks of journals awaiting whomever upon my demise. And that's what I'd like to talk with you about today is I think that journaling is a beautiful way to self-reflect. I also think that it's a very intimate, private experience because it's essentially a stream of consciousness, right? It's not even fact or fiction. It's just what you're feeling in that moment in time. So it's neither right nor wrong. And that's why I think it's a very intimate experience because you're the only one that's having that experience. And so when you get that down on paper, it can be very healing, very liberating because then those thoughts are no longer consuming your mind and your energy. And as a creator, I think it's really important that we keep our minds as free and as open as possible so that the fresh, new, exciting ideas can come in. All right, so that's what we're going to do today. This custom journal cover, which uses a little bit of the Annie's soft and stable and it truly gives it like a little squishy hug type feeling which will set the stage for your or someone else's journaling practice perfectly. So I also want to provide you with the formula in case you have a different size journal. This particular journal is available at the Michaels stores. It's a really basic, inexpensive journal. I think they go on sale for around $5. And so I thought that this would be a good one to use because it should be readily accessible to um, anybody in the United States. And I'll give you measurements if you're outside of the United States. This journal is six inches across by eight inches tall. So it's six by eight. So the formula when you're trying to cover a book is to open that book up and place it flat on the surface and then add one and a half inches to the width and one and a half inches to the height. If it is a very thick book, you're going to need to increase that to two inches, okay? So if you're unsure, you could start with adding two inches and then test fit before you sew to make sure that you get a good fit. All right, so just to recap, open it up, place it flat, laying on the surface, and then measure across and the height and add one and a half to two inches to those measurements to get your cut measurements. For this particular book, I am adding one and a half inches. So my cut measurements are going to be 13 and a half inches wide by nine and a half inches tall. And I will need two of those. One will be the exterior and one will be the interior. So the way I did that, this print definitely is directional, so I had to take that into consideration. But basically this is a full length cut of 44 inch fabric and it is nine and a half inches tall. So a little more than a quarter yard of material. 
and I have that aligned here and now I'm going to working from the selvage edge there I'm going to cut my 13 and a half inch body panels So I have two rectangles here, nine and a half by 13 and a half inches. And then I have this remnant here, which is folded. And it is the perfect length for my little ends, which the cover of the journal will sit inside of. And if you're curious, this measures 15 inches long by nine and a half inches tall. So I am just going to cut that right in half so that I have two smaller rectangles here and these are going to get folded in half and those will be the ends that the cover of the journal will sit in. So I have those ready and then I have my front and rear panels. And that's all the fabric that you need to make one of these covers. Now I do want to work with the wonderful Annie's Soft and Stable for this project. So I'm going to cut a like size piece of the Annie's and just I'll just position one of these body panels on this smaller cut of Annie's here and trim that out. And I've never made a journal cover from the Annie's, but I love how it feels and I think it's going to add such a fun feel because it's, you know, foam, so it's a little squishy there. So whichever piece has the Annie's on it will be the exterior. And then what I want to do now is run a few rows of stitching across this to hold it in place and add some dimension to this cover. And that's what that looks like. They're not, um, they are straight uh, vertical lines, but they are not evenly spaced. It's just to, add some interest there and hold that Annie's in place. That's the only purpose of those stitches. And this has a great feel to it. All right, so now what I want to do is bring over the interior panel of this and that's going to lay on the surface nice and flat and then each of my little side pieces where the cover will slip, my little slip pockets are going to get positioned on top of that with the raw edges towards that side. And I have a second one here. And that's what that looks like. So I have the two little ends on each side and then I'm going to position the exterior right on top of that. So this is a little journal sandwich there and we have the interior, the two ends that will hold the cover of the book and then the exterior panel which has the Annie's and is quilted. All right, so this is what your sandwich looks like. And then what you're gonna need to do is sew across the top, down one side, and across the base. For this, go ahead and use 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, so I have stitched across the top, the side, and the base. I like to go in now and make sure all the layers are captured in there because you don't want to 
get this finished and realize there's a hole in it. So on the ends, there's four layers plus the annies and um, in the center there, there's just the two layers. Now go ahead and trim this up to a quarter inch. Then you will reach inside and turn this around. You want your pockets to uh, end up on the side that is not quilted. Okay, so you may have to adjust that. And this is a great time to poke out those corners at the ends. Okay, so initially you have the two pockets on the front and no pockets on the exterior. You're going to take this open end here and you are going to turn that around so that you have that end that has the opening, the pocket is now on the front. Pull everything nice and taut and then stitch across there using your 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And once you're sure all your layers have been captured in there, you can trim that up to a quarter inch as well. And then you will turn that over to hide that fourth seam there, that raw edge. And you have a beautiful custom book cover that is sized to fit darling really darling and it has such a wonderful feel to it when you pick it up it's like ah oh. it just kind of sets the stage and the word hugs is right there and that's what this kind of feels like is a hug i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i hope you know somebody who might enjoy this gift and i hope you will consider starting a journaling practice for yourself if you do not already have one. So I want to thank you for spending this time with me. It's an absolute pleasure to chat with you during the premiere of the video and I am really looking forward to this handmade sewing series here at Sewspire for the month of December 2021. I have some really great projects planned for you. So please do join me Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time for our next project in the series. And if you haven't had a chance yet, please do give the video a thumbs up. And I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to receive notification of my future videos. So until we meet again, please know, as always, the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Hope you have a beautiful weekend.